gonna face the east and give all praise to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Shem, Rekakadash. Yahweh been the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah been the name of His only begotten Son, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Now we see we at the end of this, this man's kingdom, and pretty much you see all, all hell is breaking loose and war is going on. And these Americans, they finally done hit the um, last strike where they done attack these people um, country when they are certified soldiers and these Americans are a bunch of uh, peanut butter chasers. So they already know that they finished. Now when you go into um, the scriptures, it talks about signs that was going to be given. And let's get right into it. This is Matthew 24 and this is Jehovah speaking to his disciples. It says Matthew 24 and 3 it says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world so we see that um pretty much this this is the end verse 4 he said and Yahweh shall answer and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you because this is going uh cause the fate of a lot of people because this is when deception is going to start to reach its highest peak because during wartime this is when propaganda go out just like in World War One and World War Two. and when the troops start to come out in World War One, they start to come out with all this the KKK rebirth uh, you had uh, King Kong the black man uh, is a brute he going to take over uh, you had um, these preachers coming against them, uh, the Israelites that was in Harlem who was waking up the people telling them that they were Israelites. So you had all these things happening when they came out in uh, 1910. So 1910 was one of the first uh, years or situation. Oh, they came out with the Federal Reserve three years later in 1913. They said, let's consolidate the money. See, they met up in Georgia, and uh, all these elites met up in Georgia, these elite Edomites met up in Georgia, and they say, let's start a Federal Reserve, a central bank. See, let's centralize our power. Are you vlogging? Now, um, so the Rothschilds already had um, talk, spoke to the religious leaders, and they say, oh, um, we need to help, we need some help with this religion. So the religion already done contacted the uh, elite Edomites. See, so first they got they got the bank system, the money right. They got the um, KKK going, the female KKK and the uh, male KKK. And the female KKK was pushing their stuff more than anybody. See, they was making sure all the statues of their forefathers was up. That's when they went on a statue campaign. Let's put up all the generals and the, the elite Edomite statues all around so our children can remember that we was ruling before these Negroes take over. Because they starting to wake up in New York City, in Harlem, New York. See, we need to make sure that all these statues of these Edomites is up so they don't know what's going on. They can know what's going on. Our children can know what's going on. See, all of that was happening when the Israelites started to wake up in 1910. But see, that wasn't the time. That's why you say rumors of war, there was gonna be rumors of war. But see, the deception was gonna get deeper because gonna, it's gonna take a time. That was just the beginning when World War uh, I happened. Now let's go to uh, Revelation and get those verses. Revelation 9. Revelation 9 and 12, it says, 
One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So that World War I was just the first beginning. This just was the beginning when these Edomites realized, oh, the Negroes that we brought over here in slavery, they are the true Israelites, and they telling us in the books. See, preacher, he, he wrote a whole book, I forget his name. The preacher wrote a whole book and said, this is an Israelite myth. The Negroes being Israelites is a myth. See, he was, he was, he was on it heavy. So they already was knowing. They was writing books about it. All the preachers of the world was talking about it. See, but these Negroes in this time, they didn't know what was going on back then. See, that's why he said, let's get it. In uh, Second Ezra, they say, um, Second Ezra 6 and 20. It says, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I show these tokens. The book shall be opened before the firmament, and they shall all see together. See, that's why when the internet came, now we can go back in history and see what was going on without going to a college, without going into their library without looking through a thousand books. See, we can go on the internet, and whatever question we got in our mind, we can look it up. And then you got the prophets coming out and breaking down the history, pointing towards the, uh, the information that needs to be uh, talked about. Because the book will be open. The books will be open. And this is not just talking about uh, the, the scriptures only is talking about history and everything else. The truth will be exposed. Oh, and that's another one that talks about uh, the truth. Here it is in verse um, verse 27. It says, for evil, this is 2nd Ezra 6 and 27, for evil shall be put out and the sea shall be quenched. 28, as for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. See, in the end, the truth is gonna be declared. So when them first wars start popping off, the truth was, it was on the scene, but it wasn't being declared in a, in a, or I would say the seat wasn't being quenched. But now, now the seat is being quenched. They can't come up with their lies and uh, their lies ain't gonna prevail. Now you go back to Matthew 24. It says, uh, take heed that no man deceive you. So now the Israelites got to take heed the one that was uh, written in the book, they was gonna take heed. The elect was gonna take heed. And they not gonna be the seed. Now verse five show how after that first war, you was gonna have a whole bunch of people claiming that they um, are the anointed, claiming that the Lord is speaking through them. See, they all in these churches talking about the Lord told me this and told me that, and they ain't got a scripture to back up nothing. See. And so that, that from 1910 all the way to uh, the 2000s, they, they religion was prospering and they were doing all kind of lies through these religions. But now in these last days, see, when they know what's going on, the prophecies is proving all of them wrong. They all get shown to be liars through these prophecies. Now, verse six, it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars See, that's that first woe. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See, the end wasn't going to be when that first woe, because you had three woes that was coming. Now let's get um, the other woe in um, Revelation 11. This Revelation 11 and 14. It says the second woe is past. 
And that's World War II. And behold, the third woe come quickly. So the second woe was World War II. So you had all kind of, um, uh, what you call it, situations popping up for that World War II. Because now you had the Israelites done preached from 1910. They done been preaching, uh, it started in 38, so they've been preaching for 28 years that the Israelites was the blacks, the descendants of slaves here in America. That was a part of that first war. Then the second war, you were at 1938. Okay, so um, it's saying the third war come quickly. So that third war had came, but people was hearing the rumors of war ever since World War II. They were still hearing the rumors of war. You had the Korean War. You had um, what other wars you had? Uh, you had Vietnam. So it was it was wars going on. Then you had the, the Cold War where uh, Russia and America was going back and forth. So it was always a rumors of war. He said, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Verse seven, for nations shall rise against nation. That means race, not no government. Races will rise up against each other, having race war. It says, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in the first place. So all of them elements, you had to have race wars going against each other. Now, the, the, the Edomites understand that uh, who they are, because now the truth's starting to come out. See, that's why that third war was gonna come quickly. Then you got um, governments going against each other. And then the famine start to develop. See, the, and then you got inflation causing that. So it's not like a famine where uh, you can't get the food, is you can't afford the food. It says um, pestilence. You already know that they had a whole so-called pandemic uh, pushing poison out to people. And then it says earthquake. Just uh, a couple days ago, they had um, 5,000 earthquakes in one day or something like that. 5,000 in, in a couple days or in a month. Some drastic number of earthquakes. And so these, these were some of the signs that we was gonna see. It says, verse eight, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So that just was the, the beginning. See, it wasn't gonna be the end. Um, of the situation because some more stuff had to be developed. Now let's go down to verse 11. It says, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So now you got these Israelite uh, camp. They straight up telling major lies and they selling out to the government. See, they selling out to Esau. Esau done gave them a bag and now they want to uh, change the whole doctrine. Go against, oh, the one West doctrine. See, the One West Doctrine, when you and them know nothing about no Israelite, it the one the One West Doctrine. Oh, the, these Israelites, they, they talking about hating and hating these people and hating that people. See, and so that now, this is how the false prophets come. You got the uh, Israel of God. Oh, the, the Gentiles can come in. The Gentiles can get some uh, a part of the blessing that the Israelites gonna get. They not going into slavery and all this kind of crap. It's not going to be that kind of a slavery. See, you got the one body talking about, oh, they're not going to go into slavery, uh, or they y'all don't should be out here talking to them and, you know, on the highways and byways, telling these Edomites and these other nations that they're going into slavery. See, that's how you say many false prophets shall arise and deceive many because a lot of people that stand in them congregations, especially Israel of God over there in Chicago, they've been in, the, in that congregation for a long time and they sucking up them lives that these people that know that they is a light, but they still telling a bunch of lies. Now, um, and you got a lot, of, lot of, a lot of other ones, but I'm not gonna go into all of that. That's just some of the examples. Uh, what the OGC, O G O C C, 
talking about the, the Gentiles can come in and the dead is fallen angels and all this kind of crap. I'm telling a bunch of lies. Uh, now it says, verse 12, it says, and Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So now, people are just uh, so sinful. And not only that, the Israelites are coming out and bringing that, bringing out the law. So now that they're coming out with the truth, is letting people see how wicked they are. See, and that they, they Christianity didn't clean them up. See, you got a lot of people around here. They've been told that oh, you went to they went to church with their grandma, and they said oh, you the Lord died for you to be wicked. See, he, you can't keep that law. Uh, and he gonna you die for all your sin. So they thought they could just be wicked, and he gonna they gonna go home and pray, and it's gonna erase their sin. Which is a bold-faced lie. See, now they seeing that, okay, we are, we addicted to this stuff, and we dead wrong. The Christian church ain't going to clean up our sin. See, because the church can't clean up your sin, you got to clean up your sin. See, and you got to follow that law. See, your forefathers was sprinkled, uh, blood was sprinkled over their forehead, and they said they was going to follow that law. But see, you can't follow the white man. He can't follow the law. He was created to be wicked. That's his purpose on the earth. To rape, rob, and murder people. See, this is his purpose. So you can't do what he do. You know he can't uh, follow the law. That's why he gonna tell you. That law, nobody can be perfect. No, you can't be perfect. See, the Israelites can follow that law. Our forefathers gave us that law. Our forefathers was given that law. Your forefathers weren't given the law. So yeah, you can't do the law. You right about that. See, but Negroes is following their uh, slave master, and now they see that their sins have increased in their mind. So now they're going to do all kind of wicked crap. And then they reject the prophet. Let's get that. What is it? Um, 2 Chronicles 36 and 16. It says, verse 16 of 2 Chronicles 36. But they mock the messengers of God and despise his words and misuse his prophets. See, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. See, this is what they don't understand when they mock the prophet because they think they did some raggedy Negroes from the project. They some raggedy Negroes that working at Burger King, McDonald's. Uh, working at the garbage truck, being a maintenance man, and a, and a uh, mopping floors, see, cleaning toilets, see, doing the base job, working in the fields like the Mexican, doing a uh, roof job and just doing low level jobs. We can't listen to these Negroes and they can't correct us and tell us about no law. Who are these Negroes? Let's get that real quick. It's uh, Ecclesiasticus uh, 23 and 13, or 13 and 23. Yeah, 23 and 13. I mean, 13, 23. It's Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 13, verse 23. It says, when a rich man speak, every man hold his tongue and look. What he said, they extol it to the cloud. See, they, you ain't got no money. These people are not listening to you. See, you're a nobody. You don't got no money. That's why all the entertainers, the rappers, the actors, they all get listened to. And they full of wickedness. See, they doing all kind of homosexual acts just to get that money. Because this is what the small hats like. See, they like to be all this, this homosexual... Uh, in Tel Aviv, they got all kind of uh, gay parades going up and down the block. See, they like promoting that crap. And then they know that this is what God hates the most. So they want you, if you want this money, you got to come in and do this uh, perversion. And then it says, but if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? If he stumbled, they will help to overthrow him. So the poor man standing up and telling them, Listen, you finna die with your slave master and he taught you a bold-faced lie. 
if you keep on following them. See, and this is why they gonna be thoroughly deceived, but they starting to get those judgments. Cause he said they gonna wax worse. Hold on, let me go back to Matthew. He said, um, it's verse um, 12, it said, because iniquity shall abound. So now they gonna get worse because the uh, wickedness is being promoted even more, but they also rejecting that they supposed to follow the law and they mocking the, the, uh, the Lord. So now he finna kick they behind even more. Say the love of many shall wax cold. Now Apostle Paul said the same thing. What in, um, I don't know if it's Timothy. Let me try Timothy for Timothy. No, uh, Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter three. You get right to the point. Uh, let's see here. Second Timothy chapter three. Let me start at verse one. It say, "This know also that in the last days perilous time." shall come okay verse 3 uh, it says without there shall be men without natural affection truth breakers false accusers fierce displeasers of those that are good despisers of, of those that are good so the people that's good they gonna despise they behind it says traitors head Head high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godly godliness, but denying the power thereof. For from such, from such turn away. It say, for of this sort are they that creep in the houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sin, led away with the first lust. So they target is gonna be on these silly women. And they're going to be straight up despisers of those that are good. And that's dictated by that law. You see, you just ain't good in somebody's mind. You're good according to the law. Let me go back to Matthew 24. Now, um... Let me get verse 14. It's Matthew 24 and 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. See, the, nobody wasn't preaching that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans wasn't the, uh, the Israelites. See, they, were, they wasn't preaching that on a high level. Now, in 1910, it was being preached. So from 1910 to now, 2023, you have a major influx of Israelites that's hearing that they are the uh, children of Israel. Plus, you got these other nations starting to hear it because you got the internet that came out 2007 or 2005 and started being pushed real strong in 2007 with the YouTube. And so, now people are starting to hear it on a high level because uh, the earthquakes start to increase, everything start to increase. So now that they all hearing that the truth, uh, that these Gentiles is going into slavery and uh, these um, only the elect of Israelites is going to be saved, if they uh, keep God's commandments and have faith in Yahweh, now they starting to uh, understand that this is the end. Now, um, so now that um, everybody's hearing this law, guess what? I mean, hearing the truth, what is happening? And when it's a, a realization that everybody is hearing the truth, Revelation 12 and 12. It said, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. That's what he said in uh, Lamentations chapter 4. Let me get that. 
just just because it's saying rejoice, that don't mean nothing. Limitation four and four and twenty one. Look at what it says. It says rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. See that re you heavens rejoice. That's not saying nothing because it's gonna be a judgment after that. So this is exactly what he told the daughter of Edom. And this is what he's telling Edom in Revelation 12 and 12. He said, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, which are the Edomites who are ruling, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, meaning the people on the earth. And the sea is talking about the people on the earth. It says, For the devil who is the Edomites, is come down unto you having great wrath because he know that he have but a short time. See, now that the truth is coming out, he see that he got a short time. His wrath is starting to bubble up even more. When you go into Revelation 11 and 12, it says, um, and they heard a great voice, no, not 12. Let me jump back up to 11. It says that after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them that saw them. So now that, that great fear is coming upon these Edomites, they starting to say, oh man, we got to do something. Like that lady over there in, um, I don't know, Atlanta, what Atlanta she's in. If she's in Atlanta, Georgia, that make it even worse. But in Atlanta, she on the Israeli uh, court council or whatever the heck, and she talking about the black community is a is a is a uh, great threat to the freaking Israelis. So what the black community got to do with the Israelis over there? See, and they but they trying to keep it on the down low because they know that what's going on. But they trying to put put a blind eye to it. But they know. That's why when you go into the Song of Solomon. I mean, Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no accounts of his labor. See, now we standing in great boldness telling these dragons that you are Edomites. You're not no white person. You are red. You red, and Edom means red. So you are Edomites, see? And you is going into slavery. See, that's great boldness. And you is not no Israeli or whatever you want to claim to be, Jewish. None of that is what you're supposed to be belonging to. You coming from the seed of Edom, see? Y'all are the wicked, the devil that the Bible speaks of. See, Satan, the adversary of the Israelite, way back when we came out of Egypt, you were sitting there waiting on us. And, and the Lord told Moses to make an altar so we're going to battle against you, dragon, forever. Even in the next kingdom, we're going to still be battling these Edomites and put, throwing them behind in the pit and putting them in chains. See? This is what King David was praying for, the, the kings of the earth to be put in chains. See? That's why he said he's going to raise up that tabernacle of David because... That tabernacle of David is going to be handing out those punishments to the heathen. Now I'm going to give this back at uh, Wisdom on Solomon chapter 5 verse 2. It say when they see it, so they seeing it. They, it the, uh, the Jewish people on the internet, so they seeing everything on there. It say when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. See, when, some, when a cat gets scared, he go in the corner and he get the ran. He ready to fight. See, when you corner a cat, he ready to fight. So this is what's going on with the so-called white man who's trying to steal our identity. He in the corner now. He corner. He ready to fight. So now that's why they starting all these wars. They trying to kill uh, the people that's in the land and, and cause all distractions so they can really fast forward their plan. But they... And they're seeing that the Lord is causing the war to go down. Let's, let me jump back to um, Jeremiah 28 and 8.
because what is the prophets telling them? They standing on their feet, but what is the prophets exactly telling them? It says the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, so that means all the prophets that came, it says, spoke against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So now they seeing them stand up on their internet and they, they had the, uh, what they call it, S, some uh, security survey, survey place where they see them watch everybody on the internet and listen to people phone call. They sitting there <laughs> watching the prophets telling them that war is coming. Then not only they done told them for 20 years that war was coming and then war start knocking at the door. The Arab starts throwing missiles at them. See, they were, or, or Russian, the Russians start saying, oh, y'all getting too close and start killing, killing them. So now they seeing that war has started. The prophets are here. They know it's the end. So this is why they coming out with terrible fear and they gonna come with great wrath. When somebody get terrible, ter uh, terribly fear and they got a military, see? They gonna start using what they got in their military. And they, they setting up the whole situation anyway, man. Now, um, let's go back to Revelation. <clears throat> Revelation 12 and 12. Yo, it say, no, he have a short time. So now it goes into the dragon, what the, the other stuff that these dragons gonna do. But the key part is verse 17. Revelation 12 and 17 is saying, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to wage war with the remnant of her seed. That woman, you go back to verse one, it says, a woman was clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet and upon her head, there was 12 stars. Those 12 stars represents the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So these 12 tribes is what it's talking about. It's not talking about a woman. See, this is just how we talk. We, we make uh, songs and we talking uh, metaphors. When we make rap songs, that's just how we talk. We got hip talk, we talk slang. This is how we talk. So it says the woman, uh, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to wage war with the remnant of her seed. How are they gonna wage war with the remnant of her seed? And that remnant of her seed mean with her children, the children of the 12 tribes. How are they gonna wage war with them? See, that's why Yahweh shall say, let no man deceive you. They gonna wage war with deception. See, the whole plan is gonna be to deceive these Israelites. It says, um, went to wage war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. They already raising war saying, listen, we don't want no, uh, none of y'all thinking that y'all can keep the commandments. It's impossible for you to do. So you, you gotta eat a stinking pig. You can't, you can't resist that pig. <laughs> that pig is unresistible. <laughs> See, they're they gonna come with all kind of lies, man. It says, which keep the commandments of God and have faith in the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Now, this is the whole part. Have faith in what? What is that testimony that you're supposed to have faith in? Revelation 19 and 10. And I'm just gonna get the last sentence of that verse. It says, worship God for the testimony of Yahweh is the spirit of prophecy. So now they gonna have faith in that prophecy. They gonna keep his commandments and have faith in that prophecy or the prophecies. See, and one of the main prophecies is, let's jump to verse, chapter 13. It's Revelation 13 and nine. Talking about the, the, the beast, which is already all the theologians can tell you, is talking about Babylon, the great America. See, it's talking about the so-called, they, they call it the Anglo-Saxon uh, American world power and all this crap. But it's just the rulership of the Edomites and the so-called white man. It says in verse 10, this is Revelation 13 and 10, he that leadeth into captivity, meaning slavery, 
shall go into captivity. He shall go into slavery. It says, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So this is how the dragon is going to try to battle against the Israelites. Through deception, let no man deceive you by any means. Saying, that, oh, we're not going into slavery. We're going to be in a paradise earth with you. We're going to be equal to you. See, y'all ain't going to get no blessings, but y'all going to be the high priest. And y'all going to be ruling over the earth as the high priest. Kings and priests. That's not going to be y'all Israelites. Even though chapter 7 of Revelation tell you that the 144,000 Israelites. No, nah, that ain't talking about y'all. That's talking about some, some Edomite Christians in the Jehovah Wickedness congregation. And they're going to be the anointed class. And they're going to go all the way up there in heaven. They ain't going to be on the earth ruling. They're going to rule in heaven. See, they're just going to be organizing stuff from heaven. This is the crap that the Edomites is telling these people, man. But what does the scripture say? This is uh, Revelation 7 and uh, 7 and 4. Just get right to the point. It says, And I heard a number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. See, this, are, this is the governing body. This is the leaders, the rulers of the next world. The children of Israel. It's simple and plain. But they're going to gaslight you and say, well, what about the great crowd? Jump down to verse 9 and it talks about a great multitude. All he's doing is quoting Hosea chapter 1. Hosea chapter 1, starting at verse 10. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. So now that great multitude, what, who is he talking about? The children of Israel, because they can't be numbered. And see, the uh, Apostle John know that you just don't come out your mouth with anything. You got to quote the Old Testament. You got to quote the prophets and the law. You just can't come out and say something. Because <laughs> all, the, all the foundation have been set with the prophets. He made sure when he set the foundation, the prophet's going to set the foundation so nobody can't come up and run their mouth and start saying some crap that the prophets didn't say. I'm going to show them the whole story. Let's get that. He said he's going to show the Israelites the whole story about the beginning and the end so nobody can come up and run their mouth and try to change the situation. This Isaiah 46 and 10, he said declaring the end from the beginning. See, who was the beginning? The Israelites. And from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. See, he's saying, what I told the prophets, that's going to stand. You're not going to get some Christian church or some Judaism or Muslim mosque that's going to change what the prophets done put down. Because I done showed them what's going to happen from the beginning all the way to the end. And just like we've been on these blocks telling them World War III is coming. See, first they tried to gaslight us and say, oh, y'all preaching hate against the so-called white men. No, no, no. We telling you that war is coming. And what happened? War start to come. See, pestilence start to come on a high level. Evil, bad times start to come. The economy start to crash. But they thought they uh, was going to get around them prophecies. You can't get around the prophecies. There's no way around them. Let me get 1 Timothy 1 and 18. A lot of people don't use this verse, but this verse telling you the whole situation. Because this is a this is how we fight this war. This is how the prophets came out. The prophets is like the army, uh, the army of God. That's why they call him the Lord of Armies. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 it says, This charge I commend unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on you, that you by them, by them prophecies, might war a good warfare. See, we're going to uh, do the run, we're going to uh, Genesis 49. 
when you go into Genesis 49, what was a major prophecy that these Christians never come out their mouth and talk about? This Genesis 49 and 1, it said, And Jacob called unto his son and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you which shall befall you in the last days. Now, why is he telling them what's going to happen in the last days? They're going to drop dead. See, Jacob and his 12 sons, they all dropped dead. He told them what's going to happen in the last days so their sons can look at it and say, oh, this is what's going to be happening with, with our nation and with our tribe. And uh, let me pick out one of them. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, verse 8, talking about Judah, the top tribe. Genesis 49 and 8, it says, Judah, you are he who your brother shall praise. So all the Israelites, they looking towards Judah. What Judah doing? What the tribe of Judah doing? See, that's the American Negro. They want to be rappers like us. They want to wear their clothes like us. They want to talk like us. They want to uh, have they, the women do the same thing. The women walk, talk like our women, follow our women. It says, uh, your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. See, that's why we, and when they say in the neck, that means just like saying in the bosom. We're going to be real close to our enemy. Because the enemy, God's going to have us on the plantation, working and being in his house. See, the enemy going to run his kingdom with the, king, uh, the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is going to be in the, in the real close to the, the Edomites that's going to be running the whole scene. Because they the close uh, overseers over the Israelites, who the whole kingdom uh, is getting rich off of. And so this is how we know we the, we the uh, uh, tribe of Judah plus all the brethren was going to come to Babylon, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So he was telling us in the last days where we was going to be. That's prophecy. You can't get around that. See? Then when you go into Ezekiel 30, uh, 37, I left my sign. Uh left the sign the Lord and uh let's see here hold on Ezekiel 37 Ezekiel 37 I'm gonna get right to the point because for some reason my internet not letting me go live or these dragons not letting me go live so I got to do a separate situation. But uh, Ezekiel 37 gave another prophet about the 12 tribes. See, they was going to... Um, they was going to um, have a specific thing happen with these 12 tribes. I think, let me get 19 and 20. It says... Say unto them, thus says the Lord of hosts, this is Ezekiel 37, 19 and 20. Uh, Behold, I will take a stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and put with them, and put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. So he's going to have the 12 tribes on a sign. This is what it's talking about. He's going to say it later on. Verse 20. It says, And the sticks thereon thou writest shall, shall be in your hand before their eyes. So now you're going to have a stick. Ain't nobody, first of all, if you got any sense, nobody's going to hold up a stick. They gonna, nobody's going to come on the block trying to find Israelites, and they're going to have a stick, and they're going to write on the small stick. No. It's going to be on a sign. When you write on something, you write a sign. Let's see what if, they, if you got more detail. I'm going to jump back up to 17. It say, And join them one to another in one stick, and they shall become one in your hand. Look at verse 18. It say, And when the children of your people shall speak unto you, saying, Will you not show us? what you mean by these so now he's saying show us what you're talking about 
So when you trying to show, show somebody something, what you gonna do? Hold up a sign. They gonna have their name on it, like Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Issachar, Naphtali, uh, Asher, uh, what is it, uh, Zebulon. So you gonna have Manasseh. You gonna have all these names of the children of Israel on a sign. You gonna write it on a sign. That's that 12 sign, 12 uh, tribe chart that the uh, prophets hold up. See, and this is what's gonna happen in the last day. They can't get around them two prophecies. See, the Israelites was gonna uh, stand up in the last days in great boldness with signs in their hands telling them their, the fellow Israelites who they are. And this going back to Hosea, because I stopped at Hosea when it talked about the sand of the sea. They gonna hold up them signs and it's gonna, it's gonna say it. I'm gonna start over with, in verse 10 of Hosea chapter one. It says, yet the children, and yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it is said unto them. So in the place where they, people telling them their identity, they gonna be, it's gonna be prophets holding up a sign saying, listen, look at this sign. You, you're not a black person, you're a Judite. You're not a uh, Jamaican, you're a uh, Benjamite. See, they're going to have a sign in their hand. It says, And it shall come to pass in that place where it was said unto them, You are not my people. See, they calling you Puerto Rico. You're not a Puerto Rican. You're, you're from the tribe of Ephraim. See, you're not a Mexican. What the heck is that? You, you're from uh, Issachar. You're not a Hispanic. That don't mean nothing, man. See, they're going to have a, a sign trying to give them their identity back. It says, that in the place where it is said unto them, you are not my people, that there, in that same place, it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. See, first he would say, oh, you just a, a African American, whatever the heck that means. See, two names came from two white men. See, they, they gonna be saying that to you. But in the same place they saying that, they gonna be saying, nope, you from the tribe of Judah. You from the tribe of Levi. You from the tribe of Benjamin. See. They can't get around the prophecy. And they wouldn't be able to say that if we had our true identity with our history. See, if you can go to a land of black, if you can go to a land of African American, see, you can't go to them lands because that name is just a, a, a name somebody threw out there. They don't have no meaning, and no man was named no African American. No man was named black. See, that's an ignorant fool talking like that. Verse 11, it says, Then the children of Judah and the children of Israel, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appointed unto them one head, and they shall come up out of the land of their captivity, and great, and for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So it's going to be a great day when they go back, not in like 1947, when they went over there and pushed them uh, Palestinians off their land and told uh, the Roth, sent the Rothschild a letter. Uh, Lord Rothschild, we want to go back into that land over there with the Palestinians at, and give us permission to go back over there. Because see, they was, they was calling him Lord back in 1929 or something like that. Or 19, uh, what was it, 19, 19 or something. It was some date that they had on it where they started calling him Lord. And he had not earned the right to be called Lord. The lock, yeah. I want to see why my why my um light is going down. I guess it's trying to preserve my time. Anyway, I'm just gonna just have to cut off. Um, so yeah, let's see here. Well, we was at Hosea. So yeah, them prophecies in um, Genesis 49 cuts all of that Christian mess. The 
prophecies in uh, Ezekiel 37. Because see, the Jehovah wickedness, they'll try to say, oh, um, it's a spiritual paradise. <laughs> there ain't no spiritual paradise. You're supposed to have a sign up saying that the children of Israel are Mexican, are Puerto Rican. See, the children of Israel are Cubans, Venezuelans, Colombians. This is where you can find the children of Israel. This is where they're going to be. They're in Haiti, they're in Jamaica, see? They're down there in the West Indies. This is where the children of Israel is at. The children of Israel is in America. They're descendants of slaves. They're in India, they're in Japan, J Japanese. If they were scattered on that slave ship, if they were a part of the slave trade, they are the children of Israel. See, this is the uh, prophecy that's supposed to happen. Not no freaking Christian church and no Jehovah wickedness. See? But they try to come with those lies, but the prophecy is killing all the lies. Because God don't lie with the prophecy. If he wants you to say that prophecy, he's not going to tell a lie. See, he's going to tell you a certified situation that's going to happen. And if they if they Christian church don't match up with that, that means they, they the false prophet. They the antichrist. And that's what it is. Because they ain't holding up no sign telling the children of Israel that you finna rule and you finna have slaves. Because right now you is a slave. See, you don't got no land. You don't got no military. They can come take your children anytime they want to. And all you gonna do is cry. See, just like in slavery. You ain't got nothing changing nothing. See, the foundation has been laid already. Everybody got their land. You uh, broke the commandment and got kicked out of your land. And now you in everybody else's land living off them and in their land. See, that's how he said they was going to be a blessing to the, uh, the, the Abraham seed would be a blessing because they're going to be slaves in all these people's land. And they're going to be a blessing to them people because we can work these jokers for nothing. We can give them a minimum wage. Work them to can't see the can't see with a minimum wage. And guess who's going to get rich at the end of the day? We are. See, that's a blessing from the Lord. But see, they going into slavery after that. That's another thing that they, they don't know. So that's why you say rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Rejoice, ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them. Because you got the Israelites as slaves, and it ain't going to last forever. That's why World War III is knocking at the door. World War III is already popped off. I want to call the video, World War III is already happening. That means the Israelites finna be delivered. See, and these other nations are finna go into slavery. Now let's get a verse backing that up. We got Joel. Joel chapter 3. We gonna get right to the point. Verse chapter, uh, verse 2 of uh, Joel 3. They say, I will also gather all nations. Why is he gathering all nations? Why? It said to bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. World War III. It says, and I will plead with them there for my people. That's why he, that's why World War III is happening. Because the Israelites have been in slavery and they've been kicked out of their land for, for um, thousands of years, pretty much. Because King David ruled, King Solomon, King Saul, Jehoshaphat, some other kings, they, as 12 tribes, they haven't been ruling in their land. See, they've been in captivity for a long time. So now their captivity is coming to an end, and that's why World War III is happening. He said, I'm going to gather all nations because my people are in slavery. But they got to go on somebody thanking job. <laughs> and make somebody else rich. And my purpose was them for them to be high priests and kings on the earth. That wasn't their purpose. Now, um, Joel 3 and 6, to get right to the point. He said, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecian, that ye might remove them far from their border uh, verse 7 
Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. See, that's what World, World War III is about. Returning the recompense upon the head of these Gentiles. Verse 8, it says, I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans and to a people far off for the Lord have spoken it. So this is why he gathering nation into World War III. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. See, that's why Russia is going against Ukraine. That's why the Palestinians is attacking the Israelis and vice versa. See, that's why Americans is going over there messing with the Iranians, talking about Hezbollah and they coming to America. See, all this drama is happening because the Lord is gathering them together. Let's go to uh, Revelation. Revelations uh, 18, I mean 16 and 14. Get right to the point. He says, For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to unto the kingdom of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So he's gathering these nations saying, Y'all got a recompense. Y'all need to, y'all gonna have to pay back the Israelites for having them as slaves. That means y'all gonna pay them back, how? Be their slave. Let's get that out of um, Isaiah. Isaiah 14. I'm gonna start from verse one. This is Isaiah 14 and one. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, slaves. And they shall take them captive, who captives they were. See, we was captive to these other nations for hundreds of years. It says, and they shall rule over their oppressors. See, we're going to rule over these, he these Gentile heathen. And that's going to be how he's going to recompense them with this World War III. Verse uh, 3, it says, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give you rest from your sorrow. Why is he saying you? Because he's talking to the Israelites. See, the Bible is not talking to no freaking the whole world. It says, the Lord shall give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from your hard bondage wherein you were made to serve. The Rothschild ain't serving nobody. See, and all the Edomites that kiss up to him and whoever kiss up to him, they have the power to free him. And most of the time, they got the, uh, do some kind of homosexual act or do some kind of wickedness they go against God to receive their uh, constellation right then. And then they, they, their reward is going to be uh, that lake of fire. So let's go to Proverbs. Let's see here. I think it's 26 and 10. It said, The great God that formed all things, both reward the fool and reward the transgressor. So their reward is going to be that lake of fire. Their reward is going to be slavery. 
see, because they the fools and they the transgressors. Because the fool represent these Gentiles that think that they got some kind of way to get salvation through a Christian church and through a Jehovah wickedness running your running your mouth, knocking on somebody's door, handing out a freaking pamphlet. See, they, they really uh, fooling themselves or being a fool believing that crap. And then the transgressors is the two-third Israelite that want to sit up there and run their mouth and think that the Christian church and the so-called white man is going to give them some slack and not exterminate their behind. Now when you're going to um, Jeremiah 3 and 23, <clears throat> he says, Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hill. So in vain that these so-called Christians and Jehovah Wickedness, they hoping for salvation. It's in vain. From the hills and from the multitude of the mountains, truly the Lord our God is salvation of Israel. See, salvation is of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Everybody else thinking about salvation is in vain. See, because you have no hope. The only hope you can hope on is he can save you for slavery. And I don't think you want to get uh, saved for that. You'd rather go into the lake of fire than uh, be a slave of these black suspenders and Native Americans. See, that's going to be a worse punishment. See, this is what people ain't understanding. Because we're going we me we to meditate terrors on these people. We're going to meditate all kind of ways to torture they behind and to, to get some payback on them. Because the Lord is going to have his spirit on us to do so. Ezekiel 24 or 25, 14. Yeah, Ezekiel 25 and 14. It says, And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. See, we're going to be having all kind of terrors in our mind that the Lord going to put in there. That's why he said he's going to put the law in our mind. That law is a very spiritual thing. See, he's going to be dealing with us on a high level. That's why he said we shall dwell, the Lord shall be. Let's go, we, I'm going to get it after this verse. I don't want to butcher the verse. It say, I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, says the Lord God. Okay, so we go into Revelation 21 and what is it, 3? Yeah, it said, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, with the Israelites, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So he's going to be with us on a high level. That's why it said, We shall be. God and as the angel of the Lord, see, because he's going to be dealing with us on a whole nother level and we're going to be putting terrors on the so-called Arabs, which are Ishmael over there, because see, they want to hide their identity too, but see, let me get Isaiah 25 and 7, because Esau did most of that right there, Isaiah 25 and 7, they say, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. See, people don't even know where they come from. The Arabs come from Ishmael, the uh, the Persians and the, uh, East, or the East Indians come from Elam. See, the white man is, a, is an Edomite and these Negroes in America is the Israelites. But he put a veil over all the people and went to talk about some skin color. Nobody is a skin color. What is the Arab? What skin color is he? See? So, all of these people is going into slavery, man. The Arab going into slavery because they had the sub-Saharan slave trade. Let's get that in Amos. Amos 1 and 6. This is talking about the Arabs. It says, this say, Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. 
So you had a, a slave, the um, Arab, giving us to the so-called white man. So their punishment is not going to be uh, taken away. What do you say? I will not turn away the punishment thereof. They going into slavery. See, they going to be in uh, in our fields picking our uh, produce. They going to be picking produce, and they going to be giving us their gold and their clothes and all kind of stuff, man. It's Amos 1 and 9, it says, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Taurus, that's the Hamite African, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom, and remember not the brotherly covenant. So the so-called Hamite African, they going into slavery. See, ain't nobody uh, getting a pass. So the, the Arab going to slavery, the so-called white man going to slavery, these Hamite African Buddhist scratchers going to slavery, who over there robbing their own people to the and trading, being traitors to their own people to the so-called white man. They all going into slavery. Let's get that um in Zachariah. No, that's an Amos too before my phone died. I know how these phones are. Amos 9 and I'm going to start with 11. It says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacles of David that is fallen. How is he going to raise up the tabernacles of David? Because they, they have fallen into slavery. It says, And close up the bridges thereof, and I will raise up his ruin. So his, his uh, family, the house of David, is in ruins, man. When you see the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they is ruined, ruined people. Nobody want to deal with them. It says, and I will build it up as in the days of old. So now the Israelites, they're not going to be a bunch of Negroes, uh, pimps and prostitutes and rappers. See, basketball, football players. No, they're going to be the house of David. Verse 12, it says, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen. See, all of these people is going into slavery. Let's get another one. Because it says every last one, the house of David. What does he say was going to happen? Psalms 149. And that uh, Ben Nadachu or whatever he is over there, the president of uh, the Israeli, the state of Israel that the Rothschild set up, he over there running his mouth talking about he uh, fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> well, this is the prophecy that's going to get fulfilled on his behind. King David prophecy. Psalm 149, it says, get right to the point, in verse 6, it says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. See, because we gonna, we, first we're giving out the judgment with our mouth. But it's going to end up being judgment with our physical spiritual body our uh, incorruptible bodies we gonna be kicking they behind it says uh, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand see we gonna have a spiritual sword in our hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Who are the saints? You jump up to verse 2. Say the congregation of saints, let Israel rejoice in him that made them. See, the saints are the Israelites. Not just anybody running their mouth. <laughs> you see, the, the so-called white man not running his mouth. He got tanks, guns, bombs, military. He got power. See, you run your mouth and say something with him, he ain't just going to run his mouth. He's going to show you. So we ain't going to be running our mouth in that day. We, this is just a warning call. <laughs> this is just a, a declaration. Oh, let's get in the Obadiah. Obadiah verse 1. It says, the vision of Obadiah, one of the, one of the great prophets of Israel. Thus says the Lord concerning Edom, 
we have heard a rumor from the Lord. See, the Lord untold the Israelites the secret, the rumor. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. So we among the heathen. We not the heathen. The heathen not going to be no ambassador. See, these Gentiles not going to be no ambassador. See, they just some dogs anyway. Because they love dogs. You see, he said, the heathen is sent among the, uh, I mean, the ambassador is sent among the uh, heathen. Arise you and let us rise up in battle. No, rise up against her in battle. So we rising up against the Edomites in battle. But it ain't a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. That's why he told uh, Peter, he said, I commit, com uh, commit unto you that you fight with these prophecies. You bring out the prophecies that the Edomites is going into slavery. That the so-called white man is Edom. See, from way back. They've been fighting the Israelites for thousands of years. Since King David. King David called them a bunch of snakes. A bunch of liars. See, they love to lie. They love to tell a bold-faced lie. That's why they got a tell-lie vision. The tell-lie vision run their whole kingdom. See? Who else controlling the tell our vision but these people in the Tel Aviv? <laughs> they telling a darn lie. This is what they do. What the Native Americans call them a, a, a double tongue, a, a fork tongue devil. See, why do the Native Americans call these people the devil and a thinking Christian or sit up there and talking about, he's my Christian brother. <laughs> you a lie. <laughs> he has been the devil and always gonna be the devil. I mean, he a liar. That's all a deceiver and a devil mean, man. It don't mean some angel, it's a disobedient angel. God made the angels where they can disobey. That's a lie. He only made humans. We had to bite off the uh, tree of good and evil to even sin. So how's an angel gonna do that and then bit off no uh, tree of good and evil? No angel can't not sin. That's a lie. That devil was talking about the white man. That's who that devil was talking about. Satan was talking about the white man. He gonna fall out the sky with all his airplanes and satellites. See, his kingdom, his uh, American dollar. See, that American dollar is gonna fall out the sky. That American dollar is at the top. You got to come to the World Trade Center with that American dollar. And with that American dollar, you got to trade your goods. You can't come there with a Canadian dollar, with a uh, Nigerian dollar, a Naira, you can't come into the table with a Zimbabwe dollar. No, they gonna say, man, what are you talking about? Where's your American dollar? That's what they gonna say, because they ruling the world. They gonna fall out of the sky, them and their military, because angels is another word for military. Angels don't always mean angels in the Bible, man. Look at the moon. I wish I could get this on the camera, but the whole situation might drop. See, when they, they hear angels in the Bible, they go, oh, they're talking about an angel. No, angel can mean an army. See, angel ain't always talking about an angel. So when Satan, the white man, fell, and his angels is talking about his army. Look at verse 19. Let me get, I ain't even got to talk. Revelation 19 and 19. And I saw the beast, which is the so-called white man, and the kings of the earth and their armies. See, it's talking about their armies, man. Not talking about no angels. Gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. See, see, it wasn't angels fighting angels. It was armies fighting an uh, uh, angelic army. And that, that's what it's talking about, man. But these people, they gonna believe they slave master. And that's the whole problem. That's why he got to bring that mark of the Satan. I call it the mark of Satan, the mark of Esau. See, Esau gonna put his uh, yoke. That's what they talk about in Revelation 6. Let's get that. We gonna get it right out the word. It says, uh, this is Revelation 6 and 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. Now that black horse represents a wicked nation. There's only one wicked nation in the Bible is the so-called white man. 
and in the world. Shoot. It says that he sat on he sat on him, had a pair of balances in his hand. Now when you go into the uh the Greek, that pair of balances mean a yoke. He gonna put a yoke on the whole world. That's why they coming up with CBDCs, uh central bank digital currency. And every country is buying into it. And then the, the so-called elites, they're going to get those currencies and they're going to dictate who's going to do what. Oh, you got credit? You got good credit score? Okay, you can do this and that. Oh, you talking against us? You get no money. You get no food. See, this is what that black horse is going to do. And this is the elite Edomites that's going to be running. That's why the, uh, the red horse lets you know who it's talking about. See, it's a red horse, the nation of Edom. Then by the time you talking about the black, that, that red horse is going to get wicked. It's going to produce his uh, wickedness on a high level. And what happens with that uh, with horses? They change colors. The horses go from black to white. See? So when he uh, when that horse get to another level, it's going to um, be black. And it's going to bring out that uh, mark of the Edomites. And they're going to want to lock you down and put that stuff in your in your body. See, it ain't gonna be good enough that we uh, got this uh, device in the computer system. We want it in your body. So when you walk in the store, all you gotta do is wave your hand over the uh, uh, scanner and we can ring up your groceries. You can wave your hand over the uh, soda machine, over your car, and unlock your car, unlock your house. They gonna have all kind of people promoting the crap. Just like they, you got Mayweather over there sending money to these dragons. Uh, and then that's when the killing gonna reach its high level where the Lord gonna have to come back and get the Israelites because they gonna be killing. That's when they gonna turn into that pale horse. See, first they gonna come and that show you the, the, the order of the situation. They, in verse 4 of Revelation 6, they gonna go to killing one another. See, and once they start killing each other, then they're going to say, okay, now we done got ourselves in trouble. We can see this thing coming to an end because we're killing each other. So let's let's uh, put a, uh, a device on everybody so we can track they behind and, and control them. That's why it's called a yoke. When you put a yoke on somebody, you control them. So they're going to put that yoke on the people and see, and that's why verse 6 is talking about the measures of... Uh, wheat for a penny and measures of barley for a penny to have when that yoke you, you got to have that yoke and so you can get this food but so that's going to dictate everything so that's when the people going to start dying on high level verse 8 it says and look this revelation 6 and 8 and look and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him so that goes back into whole Habakkuk 2 and 5 where it calls the Edomites uh, de uh, death and hell pretty much that's Revelation 20 where it talks about death and hell was thrown in the lake of fire see that's why you got to know precept upon precept and you got to know the scripture and you got to know the characters in the story. If you don't know the characters in the story, man, you totally lost in the south. You don't know who the Edomites is, who the Israelites is, who the Moabites, who the Ammonites. You don't know who these people is. You lost. Verse 8. Oh, it says, Death and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over the four fathers of the earth. So power is going to be given to these dragons that's in Babylon the Great America. Because this is where all most of the Israelites is at. That's why he bringing these Hispanics over the border. Because he's bringing them here so they can get uh, uh, go through that, that final test. Is you going to follow God or you going to follow man? It says, to kill with the sword and to kill with hunger. How can you kill somebody with hunger? See? You say, if you don't have this device in your hand, or if you don't take this brain device, you're not going to get no food, man. You can't come in our store and buy nothing. That's why in Revelation 13, it says, 
that you can't buy or sell, uh, buy or sell unless you have that mark of the so-called white man. See, if you don't have what he tell you you gotta have, you ain't coming in our store and buying nothing. See, and that's what we finna get to. Now that the war done popped off, he gonna put the yoke on the people, man. Say, you, we gotta put a yoke on these people because this thing done got out of hand. He said to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death. That's why he's called death. Because he got the power to kill your behind. He got the police station, the military. See, he got the who, the who, W-H-O. He can kill you with uh, uh, what you call the bioweapon. They got all kind of laboratories. Level 4 laboratories with all kind of diseases. Stuff that they can kill you with a disease. See, they can just let it out in the community. What they got movies of uh, 12 Monkeys, uh, Stand with uh, Outbreak. All these movies is coming out in uh, 94, showing how they can let out a freaking disease that the gut, what the CDC is, uh, Central uh, Disease Control. Who is controlling the diseases of the world? See, they control the disease so they can put it out there. They control it. See? So they can kill you in many ways. That's why they call him Death. He the pale horse. It was a uh, lady that called him the pale horse. Let me see if I can get her name. They are the pale horse. The riders of the pale horse. Let's get this lady name. The edified uh, the people a little bit more. And she straight up said it and wrote a whole book about it. We are the riders of the pale horse. See, he, he saw his women tell on him. See, the women, they'll come out and tell all his business. Stuff he don't want nobody to know, the women to come out and tell him. Say, well, who, who told her? Well, she uh, probably done slept with, by, slept with they behind as a teenager and they were running their mouth. Yeah, baby, you know you know we got control over the world and you know this and that. See, they pillow talking and they don't know they ladies gonna go tell all the information. See, why you pillow talking? You don't know that this lady, finna, uh, the Lord gonna make her tell it. Let me see if I can run into this lady's name, man. Here she go. Barbara Marks Herbert. She said, one fourth of humanity must be eliminated from the social body. A Edomite white woman. One fourth of humanity must be eliminated from the social body. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects, we destroy. We are the riders of the pale horse death. See, these, these are elite Edomite bankers, pillow talking, <laughs> telling the so-called white woman what's going on. And she come out with it and tell all their business. See, what, what date this is? I don't want to put that on. February the 9th. Yeah, so uh, Barbara Herbert, who barred Barbara Marks Hubbard? Hubbard. Barbara Marks Herbert said, We the riders of the pale horse. We trying to kill off one fourth of the humanity. See? So these people are certified, man. And let's get uh, Psalms 64. See, they pillow, pillow talking, and the Lord's gonna expose they behind. Psalm 64, and I'm gonna start with verse seven. It say, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. Now that's go with the nuclear missile. See, he gonna shoot a arrow, these arrows, these broken arrows, which are nuclear missiles, and he gonna destroy they behind. But with information, that's also a, a weapon. Verse eight, he say, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. See, they, the so-called white woman that's pillow talking with them, 
with these elites. She, she pillow talking and all kind of stuff, and she telling her all their business. It says, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. See, they're gonna flee away. Did you uh you gonna take they um they uh poison? They saying that it's gonna help you live a long time. Okay, believe them if you want to. They gonna poison you, you gonna drop dead. They gonna be what wondering, why did I take they poison? I, I'm having all kind of problems. I know I shouldn't have trusted they behind. She, she straight up say they trying to kill off one fourth of humanity. See, that's when you know that this is the wicked nation that God set on the earth when they can come out and tell everybody, we gonna kill off everybody. <laughs> Dang. I you can come out and you say I can kill off anybody, everybody I want to kill off. You got to have some power. See, if Negroes or Arabs or anybody, China, Chinese, somebody come out and say, we gonna just kill everybody. See, only the white man can say some mess like that. We gonna kill off four, a fourth of humanity. See, you gotta have uh, abortions and kill off your children. You only can have two children in the house. What? See, they the ones got the power to do that. They the pale horse and they are meant to be the pale horse. That'll take me to my, uh, one of the greatest scriptures explaining the enemy. The prayer of Azariah, verse nine. It says, and thou did deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. See, they knew at that time it was a certain nation that was the most wickedest nation in the world. And, that and the world haven't changed. See, the high King Solomon say, uh, ain't nothing new under the sun. See, all the nations are the same. The Arabs are still wild men. They're ready to kill and go to war with everybody. They haven't changed. They the same from way back then when when uh, Ishmael was told what he was gonna be. The so-called white man is the same where he been way back then. The most wicked in all the world. It says, and now we cannot open our mouths. See, back in slavery time, I would have been hung up on the tree. But now we, the, they kingdom is falling. We can say whatever we want. Now the Lord is coming with his spirit and we can tell the so-called white man he the devil and Satan that the Bible speaks of. It says that now we cannot open our mouths. We are become a shame and a reproach to your servants. See, our people see us as blacks, black Negroes, see a Hispanic, Spics, or Native American drunk Indian. See, they don't, we have no respect. And that goes into another prophecy. Zephaniah 3 and uh, on that 19. It says, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict you, and I will save her that haunted, and gather her that was driven out. How was he driven out? On a slave ship. It says, And I will get her praise and fame in every land where they have put have been put to shame. So we was put the same. They was calling us Negroes, pimps, gangsters, thugs. See, all kind of crazy names. It says, at that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. When I will turn back your slavery before their eyes. See, they're going to see, oh, we just had them Negroes in slavery uh, over there in America. Now we done blew the country up. Now they coming to fight us. We hearing they got spiritual powers. We hearing that they destroying people all over the place. We got to bow down and kiss their feet because we hearing these people are too powerful. Ain't nothing we can do with them. You can't get no weapon to kill them. 
So you got to bow down to him. What is it? Uh, Zach Zachariah, eight and twenty-three. We gotta bow down and kiss the kiss the uh, garment because they got spiritual power. They undefeatable. It says, "Thus says the Lord of hosts: In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nation, meaning all nations, even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying." We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So they heard that it, we, they, uh, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites, and now they got to bow down. They got superpowers. So you can't uh, fight them with an army. It's not going to work. They un, they undestructible. They got incorruptible bodies. Let's jump to verse chapter 12. This is why they're going to come bowing down. It says, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. See? When they see us with that spiritual power, it ain't going to be no debate. <laughs> see, they're not going to be talking about, well, let's get on the um, internet and have a debate about this situation. See, that's not going to happen. Okay. We're at an hour and 30 minutes. Well, my, my phone behaved itself today. Um, let me add on to that with the New Testament because I know these Israelites. But where do it say that in the New Testament? 1 Corinthians 15 starting at verse 51 and say, Behold, I will show you a mystery. See, this is a secret. I'm going to show you a secret because everybody don't know that these Israelites is going to have superpowers. It says, We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. What are we gonna change into? In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. See, we're gonna have superhero bodies. That's why you got all these superhero movies talking about who? The Israelites, see, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the descendants of slaves, see, that's why they say God work in mysterious ways, he work in secret ways, they don't know what he gonna do, they think they gonna know, they think they know what he gonna do, but let's, let me show you this verse, he says, uh, behold, you among the heathen, and regard, and wonderful, marvelously sleep. A wonder, marvel marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told to you. See, though we telling the Israelites, it's gonna be 144,000 with spiritual power. And we gonna take over all the kingdoms of the world. See, they can't believe it. Because they never saw a man with spiritual power. They don't even believe in the spirit. They don't even believe in God. Only thing they believe in the power of the white man. That's the only thing they can believe in. See, if we get out of line, he's going to come with his tanks, his bombs, his police, his army. That's the only thing we believe in. That's the only thing we know. Y'all talking about some superheroes. Y'all talking about some spiritual power. We, are, we ain't seen it. You can tell it to us, but we're not going to believe that. See, that's why he said, I can tell you, but you ain't going to believe it. Because they only believe the rich man with the power. That's why he said in uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 13 and 23, that the rich man speak, every man listen. But the poor man run and say something out of his mouth, they not going to listen to what he got to say, man. Now let's get into that second edge of 16. 
and so what what's gonna happen when he make mandatory that uh so-called see hip when he make mandatory that device that you got to put in your behind verse 69 and get right to the point he says and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden under the foot so they that are consent to the government to have to put some uh, digital currency in your hand or in your head, see? He say, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Because the Lord say, don't let nobody put nothing in your body. See, don't even get a tattoo. If you can't get a tattoo, what make you think you're going to put a, uh, some of these tracking devices, uh, the digital currency in your hand? <laughs> so when the government make the mandate, what's going to happen? He said, they shall be like mad men, sparing none, but destroying and dis but spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods. So you can't be a, a doomsday prepper because they're coming to take all your stuff. And cast them out of their houses. Then shall be known who are my chosen. Why? Because we're going to get spiritual powers. When the army, when they bring their army, that's when we're going to get spiritual power. Isaiah, uh, let's see, Isaiah 59. And 19, it says, So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. So the enemy gonna come in like a flood when they martial law. And the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. What's gonna be that standard? We're gonna get spiritual bodies. Or we gonna have spiritual power that we gonna defeat whatever they got, and not every Israelite. Every Israelite not gonna get the spiritual power. Every Israelite not gonna get rescued and saved. Every Israelite not gonna be uh, have the truth. See, only the elect. Let's get that in um, Revelation 11. Revelations 11 and 13. It's talking about the nuclear missiles. Once the nuclear missiles come and those that survive, it say, in the same hour there was a great earthquake. What caused the great earthquake? Nuclear missiles. It say, in the tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake, in the earthquake was slain of men 7,000 meaning a completion. And the remnant were affrighted. So only a remnant of the Israelites is going to be saved. Every Israelite is not going to be saved. And gave glory to the God of heaven. Now 15 give you a picture. They're going to be looking down from the chariots and looking at America and seeing it's burning with fire. It says, and I saw, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. That sea of glass is talking about you can see everything under you. The ground is under you and you can see through it. It's gonna, it's gonna explain it. It says, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over his number of his name stand on the sea of glass. So the sea of glass was something that you stand on and you can see through it. It says, having the uh, harps of God. So they saw the fire, they were standing on the sea of glass, looking down at through there and seeing fire in America. That's what they were seeing. So the, the elect, the remnant, they're gonna be saved from this place. See, they're not gonna suffer that lake of fire because they're not going to take this uh, digital currency uh, that these people are trying to push 
just so they can get something to eat, just so they can have a job working for the so-called white man. See, just so they can go and pick oranges and grapes out of a field and go to the grocery store. No, they're not going to do it. Now, uh, second, second Ezra 16, 22. What's going to happen uh, due to the whole situation? It says, for many that many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So it's going to be a lot of people dying of famine. The Chinese already said, hey man, we're not going to give America no trade. So we're going to starve their behind out. See? Because everything in America is made in China. So China said, we not, we're going to cut all of that out. We're not having no trades with America. So they done attacked our ally, Iran, and now the Iranians, uh, our allies are trying to hold us to the treaty that we had with them. So we got to go against America. Oh, and I think that's in uh, 32. It talks about uh, the Chinese. Uh, 42, is it? Uh, wait, hold on. Might be 15. Yeah, 15, 32. 42 it talks about Asia. Asia. Oh, there it is, 46. Second there's 15 and 46. It says, and you, Asia, talking about the Chinese, that you are a uh, partaker of the hope of Babylon. See, everything in Babylon is ran with them darn Chinese people and are the glory of her person. See, they, the glory of America is because China bring all, put their people in these sweatshops. <laughs> they all in the sweatshop working hard, making all these products so these Americans can walk around and say, look what we got. We got this in the house, we got that in the house because the Chinese being worked to death. It says, and you, Asia, that are partakers of the hope of Babylon and are the glory of her person, person, woe be unto thee. <laughs> so destruction gonna be unto the uh, Chinese because uh, they gonna get bombs thrown on them. They gonna get bombs thrown at them too. But mostly the Israelites gonna be putting their behind in submission. Yahweh shot and the chariot is going to be zapping they behind. Because they're going to be a part of that coalition that's going to try to come up against the Israelites and Yahweh shot. Real quick, let me go ahead and get that. Is it 13? Yep, 13. It says, I'm going to start at verse 5 to get to the point. It says, and after this I beheld and lo, there was a... They had, they was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So all these armies going to try to subdue Yahweh and then that's when he going to start zapping they behind. See, they going to see that chariot pop up and then they going to jump in their plane, hit their alert system. See, and they going to go to flying. And that's probably why they're going to hate Babylon because they already hated her due to uh, the wickedness and the uh, craziness. But they, they hate really going to get involved when they see that there's terrorists over here with Israelites being beamed up. See, the Israelites being rescued and transformed into uh, superhero people. <laughs> people with superpowers. So they're really going to be ready to hit the button. Let's blow the place up. So that's how the that's how the situation gonna go down. Everybody not gonna take this man, uh, Mark, and his yoke, and he gonna try to enslave the world with. Especially not the prophets, 
and the those that believing on the prophet. See, these, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who the Lord put the spirit on, he's not, they're not going to go for that crap, man. They're not going to consent to these dragons, and they're going to reject them. And that's why he's going to um, pretty much, they're going to have to try to come and get us. But at the end of the day, we're going to take over and come down from those chariots and take over this kingdom. And we at the end right now. <clears throat> and we get Ezekiel 7 and 5. It say, verse 5, it says, Thus says the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. The end is come. The end is come. It watch for you. Behold, it is come. See, we at the end. They dollar finna drop November. The bricks finna come with they dollar. They already at war. See, they ready to bring in that uh digital dollar and lock down. Are uh, they bringing in these foreigners uh, as a, a secret army? And they, they gonna come in with the uh, martial law with all these foreigners over the border and lock down America. So we already at the end. The end is here. This Daniel 7 and 18, it says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. So when they come what they whatever they got and we waiting on them to come we ready for them to come when they come with their martial law we gonna be ready it says and the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever even forever and ever see when we get that spiritual power it ain't gonna be no uh negotiating See, it's only going to be begging and kissing our feet. Oh, yeah. they going to be begging, pleasing. Oh, please don't kill us, black man. Now, uh, let me get that in uh, Isaiah. Is it 43 or 48? Uh, 49, 23. Yeah, 49 and 23. See, dude, when we get that spiritual power, this is what's going to be happening. It's saying the king shall be your nursing fathers and their queen shall be your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their face towards the earth and lick up the dust of your feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Woo! See, that's when we get that power, it's going to be a wrap. And ain't nobody going to be ashamed. They're going to be happy that they waited for the Lord, like he told them. Uh, what is it? Isaiah, uh, Revelations 2 and 26, it says, He that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. See, that rod of iron is gonna be that power. We don't need no weapon, man. There's no weapon that we gonna need. As for the vessels of Apollo, they shall be broken in the shivers. We gonna break the nation. See, it ain't gonna be something that, it's just like on Bright Boy. Uh, uh, was it Bright Boy? No, it wasn't Bright Boy, it was, uh, uh, I think it might have been Bright Boy, but the little boy, he uh, came from heaven or whatever, and then he started killing his family and the people that found him in the woods. Uh, he, that's how it's going to be, man. Superpowers, and ain't nothing they're going to be able to bring that can stop us. That's how we're going to be breaking them into shivers, man. But I'm going to leave it there. Face the east, all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rikakadash. Double honor to the elders pushing the truth. Peace to the elect worldwide.
the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, descendants of slaves scattered around the globe on slave ships and through many captivities, our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.